everyone and welcome back to Deersley. In this video I'm going to be making the Dapol 15 ton diesel crane. Those of you that enjoyed the JCB uh, build would be interested I think in this new kit I've bought. It's uh, another Dapol one, formerly an Airfix kit, so similar in many ways to the JCB. I have the bits laid out in front of me and I've done a fair amount of research on this kit and I've even come up uh, with a set of plans which is useful. I thought I would check uh, the details, particularly the chassis and the wheels, um, against the kit just to make sure I could follow the uh, plans I've uh, downloaded. I've put a link to these plans at the end of this video so you can download your own copy. The big anomaly with this kit is the fact that uh, it has two uh, bogies uh, instead of a rigid chassis. So I can either convert a tender or I can scratch build. And I've decided to scratch build a new chassis using the wheels that come with the kit. Having checked the dimensions of the chassis against the measurements on the plans here, they appear to be pretty correct. This is the, um, the, the sort of platform section of the crane. The uh, cab and all the mechanisms revolves on that plate there. And overall, it scales up to the measurement uh, on this plan. So that's fine. So these are the original frames with the kit designed to take the two bogus. But I'm just going to use that for overall dimensions. And I'm going to cut some new slide frames in this sort of width, same sort of width here, which is about a millimeter. I think that's about 40 thou. I have uh, put a, a square line across uh, here, and I'm going to measure the length of the um, kit frame. Do it on the back, it's easier. And that is 91 millimetres. Yeah, 91 millimetres. So on that mark there, I'm leaving a bit at the end of this strip, and I've made a pencil mark there, and I'm going to put that on and mark 91 millimetres. And then I'm going to, using the square, put a pencil mark across there. They will eventually be cut across those uh, pencil marks. <clears throat> Just double check my measurement. Yep, that's fine. And this bit here, which is about, it doesn't really matter. It's not really critical, this bit, but it's about 12 millimetres. So I'm going to extend this by 12 millimetres, this side. And then I'm going to, I shan't even square that off, actually, because it's, that measurement is, or rather that squareness is not critical. So I'm going to cut that across. And then on my second frame, I'm just going to cut that so that it's the same size. These are the two parts that will make the side frames of the new chassis. So obviously, because of the drilling for the axles and the uh, any shaping that I need to put on here, these have to be identical. They have to be square with each other and identical. So what I'm going to do is stick them together.
mirror is a handy thing or a piece of glass for levelling things up. It's perfectly flat so I'll be using it throughout this um, bit of scratch building. I have been checking the uh, jib against the uh, plans. There are no measurements for the jibs but using the, um, the other measurements here I've sort of calculated roughly how long the jib is and it does appear uh, to be short in the kit. Um, I plan to use this uh, Airfix um, bogey bolster wagon as a jib runner. It's a, a Great Western uh, truck and it was the kind of uh, vehicle used as a jib runner on the prototype. Now according to the plans this is 35 feet over the buffers but measuring this, this is two feet too long. I've decided I can't alter this really and therefore I'm not going to uh, alter the jib. Okay, so now this I am going to sort out because it's part of the chassis of the crane which I'm scratch building so I might as well do this as well. I'm going to cut that bit out. Uh, this is part uh, two actually on the kit plans and there's this nice substantial plate that goes under part two. It's actually part one so that's part one and two. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to keep this intact and cut this in two or three places and move the the uh, rotating mechanism uh, further forward. This is part two of the kit and I've sawn it into three parts. The back part um, can be glued in exactly as it is. The centre part however I've worked out roughly from the plans needs to come about three quarters of an inch forward to about there so quite some distance. The crane body then will fit on like that so that there's quite a, a gap around here and there are some boxes in the photo references I've got or they could be um, compressed air tanks or something, I'm not sure quite what they are, but they sit on the back there. Okay, I'm going to apply some glue down the centre of the rear, uh, rear third of part two. And I'm going to stick that In position in its location point there. I must make sure it's square with the, with the square before I let that dry and that looks perfectly okay. The next part is to take the centre of that hole and bring it forward by about three quarters of an inch and redrill another hole. I've roughly centred um, this new hole about halfway between the uh, front two wheel wheel positions. So I'm going to start with a, a pilot hole. Now I'll switch up to a uh, 4.5 millimeter drill. I don't want to risk too much damaging this so I'm going to open it up with a reaming tool. Just push it in and gently rotate it. It's getting wider. 
it's got to be that wide so actually the position of this hole is not critical as long as it uh, accepts the head of the part that holds the rotating cabin and um, jib on and allows that to rotate that's fine so uh, by eye is good enough and that looks about the same diameter to me so I'm happy with that so the new plate now instead of being centered over that hole needs to be centered over that one like that so I'll hold that tightly together and just mark with my pencil there. I think I'll also mark at the back here. And I'll put a line across which is square. Like that. So I'll square it up to that line there. So there's no stubs or anything on here, so I'll have to line it, align it uh, visually on that line and making sure it's evenly out from either side of part number one. So I'll go ahead and glue that and fix that in place. Okay, so now parts one and two look like that. Uh, we're left with the other half of part, um, or the other third, the final third of part two, and I've marked off the line which should be able to give us the front part of that to going there, which would should leave this part to fit neatly in that gap there. Now, there's the little stub now to uh, get rid of because there is now no hole in the chassis for that, so I'll simply remove that and sand it flat. I keep filing it down until makes a tight fit. Didn't need to remove too much actually so that now should fit quite nicely across there. I'll weather that um, panel line there and leave it. It could look perfectly natural so I won't stress too much about it. So that's not glued in but that fits nice and tight. And the other bit which I haven't cleaned up yet We'll fit on the front there. Finally parts one and two are assembled and you can see how this affects the position of the crane body. It's much further forward. As I'm going to make no alterations to the jib I've gone ahead and assembled it from the instructions. It's a little fiddly but it's pretty straightforward and I've also assembled um, some of the um, the structure around here, the cabin, and some of the winding drums inside for the cables. So uh, that's assembled and the crane jib is actually just hinged on here. What I'm going to do about all this, um, the working side of it, I haven't quite decided yet. I've set up my drill stand and this jig so that I can drill the four holes in the frames. Uh, to take the axles. I'm using a two millimeter drill because I want to fit uh, these uh, bearings. They're the Romford pinpoint bearings and uh, they'll fit one in each hole so they can take the metal axles. 
With the holes drilled in the chassis I can now saw through um, the marks at the end of these two chassis pieces and cut off the bit uh, where they're glued together. So using a razor saw and my mitre block I'll keep the cut square and saw off both ends. So now, hopefully, I should just be able to separate them into two identical parts. So now all I've got to do is fit them uh, to the kit parts on the chassis. With the new sides of the chassis now cut, I've made up the base unit or the chassis unit um, of the crane and everything is glued together and the glue is fully hardened. Now the first thing I'm going to do is make sure this is level so I'll put my glass give a nice flat surface and I'll just gently sand the base of this until it's perfectly flat and level. This is the view of the underside of the chassis. Now the thing is I want this to uh, operate on my railway, at least be towable, so I need to add some weight to this. And when I put it together I noticed obviously these uh, like little compartments and I'm going to fill this with um, fine lead shot, um, except of course this little bit, uh, but I'll fill the rest with fine lead shot. Now the shot I've used is very, very fine. I used it uh, on model uh, tricycle undercarriage aircraft to add little bits of nose weight. And it's actually tiny lead shot used by divers to fill in uh, diving weights on their belts. Um, I'm just going to pour some in there and it's almost like liquid lead. Any small fishing weights will do. It's just that this stuff will pack more densely. I'm going to use a brush just to smooth it down and then I will uh, spray it with soapy water and then apply the 50-50 mix of PVA and water in exactly the same way as you would if you were ballasting your track. While the chassis is drying, I've decided to uh, put some black paint on the uh, crane and the jib. Uh, mainly because uh, a lot of the inside um, bits are going to be showing once the outside um, uh, parts of the, uh, of the cabin are put on. And it's going to probably be easier to put some paint on the inside here at this stage than wait until it's more complete. Also, I'd like to get some paint in between uh, and underneath and behind the uh, framework of the jib.
Now the glue has dried around all the lead weights, it's time to thicken the walls of the uh, frames uh, so that they take uh, the bearings. So this is made with one millimetre card, so I've cut two more strips of the one millimetre card, about seven millimetres across, and I will simply glue them on the inside of the frames to bring them up to two millimetres. While the inner frame parts are drying, I'll clean up these uh, white metal castings I bought from Comet Models. Uh, they're actually LMS Fowler Tender Springs and Axle Boxes. And I need four of these for each side of my crane. When the inner frames are dry, I can just drill through again with the 2mm drill. to open up the axle holes. Obviously I'm using the, the holes from the first drilling as a guide. Okay the bearings and the uh, wheels and axles are now fitted on the crane so it's time for its uh, very first shunt along the railway. It seems to be running okay, fingers crossed. I will now mix some 5 a minute epoxy and glue the axle boxes in place. With the glue fully dried on the axle boxes and springs, I've mounted the last couple of bits uh, from the kit regarding the chassis, and that's the jacks. There's two on either side. In the kit, they're quite wrongly obviously fitted onto the bogus, but here they're placed either side of the front pair of wheels, either side of the where the crane crane's weight is supported. Also, the uh, little wheels, there's one on either side, and I assume they're to, um, they have something to do with the jacks, but I'm not quite sure. Anyway, I've positioned them there according to the references. Well, that's it for part one. That's all I can do up until now on the chassis, really, because I'm still waiting for the cast white metal buffers. Uh, I ordered them yesterday, so it's going to be a few days before they come. Um, so I'll pick up on this build when they get here and publish uh, part two as soon as I can. So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, first part and thanks very much for watching.